Hey everybody, it's Dana and welcome back to day three of the Valentine's Day card series. Let's go ahead and start creating. Today's color palette is a more of a mid-century modern color palette. I love this color palette. And remember, you can use whatever color you want in this series. These are just suggestions. So we're using Concord in Ninth Ink and we're using Wheat, Aqua Sky. We're also going to use Stardust in Marmalade. I love, love, love this color combination. I think it could be perfect for any kind of card, just not for Valentine's Day either. So let's get started. I'm going to bring in my Misty and we're going to be using the Heart Turnabout Stamp. And this here is like a little guide. This guide is going to help me make sure that when I'm stamping and rotating everything, that my stamp is going to line up. So the first thing you want to do is place down your little guide face up and then you're going to place your stamp right on top. You're just going to line everything up. It's super easy to do. And again, this is going to help me when I go to turn to make this design. So sorry for my head, but I had to literally get up and stand over this so I can kind of make sure I get everything lined up. Once you get it lined up on your little grid, this is going to make stamping this turnabout so much easier. So as you can see, I have everything lined up and you can be a tiny bit off and it's still going to be okay. Next, you're gonna come in with the turnabout jig. Right here and right there, you're going to see an X mark. You wanna line up that guide right on top of those marks. Again, it's very easy to see, but the way I'm filming, I needed to stand up and kind of look over, but you're just gonna line your X's up. And again, this is going to guarantee that I'm going to get a beautiful card when I'm done. Once I have that lined up, I can close down my Misty Lid. I can pick it up and now I can remove that guide. We no longer need this, but now we know that everything's going to be lined up perfectly when I start turning my cardstock. Now I am just going to grab a piece of Nina Solo White cardstock. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back. But before I get started, I want to show you that there are little etch marks in there so you can line up your cardstock perfectly. So this is an A2, which is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock. But you can use bigger cardstocks if you want. I'm just going to do the traditional route. So the first color I'm going to use is the Aqua Sky. Now I love this color, but I do know each time I press down, I wanna press down kind of firmly with my fingers and I do know I want to double stamp this because I really want my colors to be very saturated. So I'm lightly tapping on that color, trying to make sure that I don't get any of that ink on the whole rubber part of the stamp. It just kind of makes it a little bit easier. I can bring in my tidy towel. I can go ahead and rotate one time. So now I have my number two up in the corner and I can come in with my next color. So my next color is going to be that marmalade. And again, I'm just tapping on that ink color. And what's so great about these turnabout stamps, you can actually stamp them one time, two times, three times, or four. The more you stamp, the more you're gonna fill in some of that white area. So right now I could have stopped just with this color palette and this would have been so pretty. But of course, I wanna use all of those colors today. So once again, I can turn my little jig. I'm gonna have number three up in the right hand corner and then I can start stamping my next color. So about these turnabout stamps, you're always gonna start with your number one in the right hand corner and as you turn your jig in your paper, you'll end up at number four. And when you end up at number four, you're all done with the colors. So as you can see, I'm using the wheat and I'm really filling in a lot more of that white area. So this is three turns. Now the number four, my last layer is right there in the right hand corner. I can clean this off. And the last color we're going to use is that Stardust. Now again, you can use this to just stamp one single heart to backgrounds, or you can do like me and really fill it in and use all four. And again, this color palette is probably one of my favorites 
for the Valentine's Day card series. I kind of like to think outside the box on my color combinations and this one was perfect. So now we have a great little background. I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna start focusing on my sentiment. So for my sentiment, I'm using the All About Love stamp set. I love, love, love this stamp set. And I use it not only just for Valentine's Day, I also use this stamp set for my anniversary as well as just telling somebody I love them. I think I want to use that Large Love stamp. And what's so great, it has an outline in a fill-in piece. So that's going to help me to get more color onto this card panel. So I'm going to grab in my Mini Misty and I'm just using another piece of Nina Solo White 80 pound. And I'm going to stamp this out in the lighter color. So remember I have four colors going on here. I think I want to stamp the outline in the wheat color because that really won't compete with anything else. Make sure when you're using these types of stamps though is that you kind of just condition them a little bit with your hand so you can get a crisper image. So like I said, I'm going to come in with that love and that wheat and I'm just going to stamp that down on the paper. Now if you did not want to fill this in with the solid stamp, you can also use Copic markers and that would work just as well. I'm not pressing this too hard because I don't actually want to bloom out my lines, but there we have our love. So like I mentioned, there is a stamp in here that is the filler part of that love and I'm going to use that today. But I decided to go ahead and stamp this out twice because in my head, I'm not quite sure how I want this sentiment to look yet. So once again, I'm coming in with that wheat ink and I can go ahead and press that down. And now I have two pieces that I can work with or two love sentiments I can work with. And using that lighter color, it really helps just to place a very light background around this uh, bold filler piece. I really love stamp sets like this because it makes it super, super easy to have a lot of color without having to use any other color medium. Obviously, we're just using inks here. So I went ahead and lined that up. And now I'm going to do another trick that I showed in the video yesterday of using rainbow colors in your sentiments. So the first thing I want to do is start off with that aqua and I'm just putting it on two of the letters and I'm tapping very lightly and with my finger I want to blur kind of blur out that line so it doesn't have a harsh line when I go to stamp. I can go ahead and press that down and stamp and now I have my first color. Next I'm going to make sure that I have the color saturation that I want I make sure to take my finger and kind of smooth out that transition that's going to be between those two colors. So this way I just don't have a stark line between the two colors. Next, I'm going to come in with that Stardust. Again, I'm just really tapping on the color. And once I have it there, once again, I can go ahead and use my finger and kind of blend out that line so when I stamp, I don't get the harsh line between the two letters. I can go ahead and press that down. And look how easy it is to fill in this sentiment. It's super easy. And again, it's a great way to kind of bring in that color combination um, and keeping that color flowing throughout your card. All I have to do now is just clean off my stamp and come in with that marmalade. Now, don't forget, you guys, I have a Valentine's Day card series, I think, going all the way back to 2016. I'll link them below, but please make sure to leave comments. I would love to see what you think about these Valentine's Day card series. Now, I went ahead and I stamped that out, and I think it's a little bit too bold for me. So I want to kind of tone this back a little bit. Once again, so sorry for the sparkly hair, <laughs> but I really have to get over this stamp set. I'm going to start again by starting in the middle first, and I'm going to start with that Stardust. Once again, tapping on a color, using my finger to kind of blur out those lines, and then I'm going to press down. Now, I'm not going to double stamp this this time. I want this to be a little bit softer than what my background is. So this almost gives it like a distressed look. 
and it works perfectly with my card, but the sentiment ends up to be a little bit softer, and that's what I wanted in this. But I am gonna keep that additional love that I've already stamped, and I'll use that on a card some other day. Now I can come in with that aqua, tap, 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 smooth out that line with my finger, and then I can go ahead and press down. And I like this one so much better. The color's just a little bit softer, and it looks more almost like a color wash instead. Now you can see how perfectly this color palette works. I love being able to pull in those colors into my sentiment. So I wanted to show you here that I was playing around with some of the Concord and Ninth watercolors and I was able to create a beautiful background with that same color palette. Now to find out what I did with this palette or this card base, head on over to my blog. I will show you exactly what I did with this palette and you'll quite be surprised, I think. All right, now since I have everything done, I wanna trim down this panel. So I grabbed my Waffle Flowers A2 dies, and these are just stackable rectangles. And I just wanna trim down this panel just a little bit. So I can go ahead and line that up. And what's so good about using these kind of dies, you can pick the area that you want, especially if you have an area of a card that you like a little bit better than the other, you can pick that area within the rectangle. I also want to bring in a heart because again, this is my Valentine's Day card series. So I do want to add a little heart to this. So I will go ahead and grab one that's a little bit smaller than the rectangle. And this will be a great element here. So now I just want to make sure that that's going to be large enough to fit my letters. So once I know or assume that that's the right size, I'm going to go ahead and die cut this, but I just wanted to double check to see if I can get a bigger heart. And when I placed in the bigger heart, it kind of meets the corners of my rectangle. So that is way too big. So now I know I can go right back down to the initial one I had and we can use that one. I'm using some easy uh, clear tape here to tape everything down. At this point, I do not want my card panel to shift. So I'm just going to use that tape. I really like this tape because even though it is tape, it doesn't have such a great grip on it that I know it's not going to rip my paper when I have to remove it. So once I have that lined up perfectly, I'm going to have a great focal point to this card. But again, the focal point is actually going to match the backdrop. So that's gonna be a pretty cool looking card. Once I get my tape on there, I can go ahead and run this through my die cut machine. Now, please let me know below in the comments if you like this color combination. I think it's absolutely stunning. Now, to build up that um, centerpiece there, I went ahead and I die cut the heart several more times because I want to give it some depth. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I don't want it as a block piece. So I'm going to fussy cut out each one of these letters. Because I felt just having it on the white background, it was really covering up too much of the heart. So I thought maybe just having individual letters instead was going to work better for me. So once I line that up, you can see now I can have the letters and everything works perfectly and it's not gonna cover up anything. Now I can go ahead and bring in a piece of Aqua Sky cardstock. This is gonna match perfectly. Look how pretty that card is. Ah, and I'm just gonna trim this down because this is going to go onto an A2 card base. But I do wanna trim off about a quarter of an inch from two sides so I know I'll have a nice mat for this. Now my card base is Nina Solar White, 110 pound. And I'll just use my EK Success scoring board to get a good crease for that card. Now, if you guys are interested in seeing more color palettes for, let's say, spring cards, let me know and I'll see what I can make happen for you. Once I have that card base down or done, I can go ahead and start finishing up this card. Now, if you missed day two and three, they'll be linked below, but don't forget to head on over to my blog because I have an additional inspiration over there of additional cards that I made with these same color palettes. So don't forget to uh, visit the blog as well. So you can be a little bit more inspired. I did use um, liquid glue here because it's gonna give me a little bit of that wiggle room. 
And then look how soft this card is. Now again, to me, I can use this for a masculine Valentine's Day card or a feminine Valentine's Day card. I love this color combination so much that I really wanna pull these colors into my house now, y'all. <laughs> I know, I get inspiration from everywhere, but I love, love, love this color palette. So I might have to include this in my house. We'll have to see. I can go ahead and put on that hard panel and I'm gonna have that nice little border of white all the way around. So like I mentioned before, I had die cut this out a few times so I can stack this heart up. I just wanted to give it a um, little height off the card. I think this is called an eclipse look. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's what I think it is. It's an eclipse where it just, your design is just the same. You cut out an element and then you raise up that element so it kind of sticks up above the flatter portion of your card. So as you can see here, I have the palette, but it's just a little bit of lift with that heart. Once I know everything is the way I need it to be, I'm going to go ahead and use some more of that glue and press this down into place. And while I was putting this card together, I was like, why don't I do this more often? Because I really, really love this design. I think it's so pretty just to have that little lift in the center of your card that has the same pattern on it. So now I can bring in those letters one more time and look how pretty this is. It's so pretty. Oh, I would love to use this on a baby card too. This would be a gorgeous little baby's card as well. Now I want to um, lift this up as well. I want to have just a tad bit of dimension. So I'm coming in with some thin foam strips and I'll place those on the back of each letter. This is just gonna give me a tad bit more of dimension on my card, but it's not gonna be so much that I can't place it in the mail without having to pay for extra postage. Now to make sure I get everything lined up, I am going to grab my T ruler here. Now I could have eyeballed this, but then I was like, you know what, let's just get this right the first time, Dana Joy. <laughs> we have come too far in this card to mess this up right now. So by using that T ruler, it's really going to assist me on where I want this sentiment to be, as well as how high I want the sentiment to be. So as you can see, I'm kind of lowering it down a little bit because I still want to be able to see the top of that heart without my sentiment messing that up. Once I know where I want it, I'm going to start with the outer uh, letters first. This is going to help me get my spacing a little bit better. I make sure to leave the T ruler right in place and then I can go ahead and start lining those up. Now, a big tip I wanna tell you, anytime you're doing this and you're using this kind of foam tape, do not press down hard. Just lightly lay your letters or your embellishment there so you have a little bit of wiggle room in case you need to adjust it. So once I have everything lined up the way I want it, I'll get that V into place and once I know my spacing and everything is great, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and press this down because now I don't want this to move. It's in the right spot. So now I can go ahead and use my fingers and press that down onto the card. And look how pretty that is. I didn't wanna add any sequence or anything to this card, but I did wanna add one more element. So I went ahead and grabbed out my crystal glaze and I'm just going to use that to fill in my letters. Again, there's not gonna be added dimension anywhere else on this, so I'm not using any sequences or gems. So this is just the perfect way to add a touch more of an element to this card without like overkill, because I don't want this card to be super, super busy. All right, once I get all of that filled in, I tried to do a light layer, so it's not gonna take a long time to dry. And there we have it. Look how pretty this card is. I absolutely love this card. All right, everybody, that is day three of the uh, Valentine's Day card series. But don't forget, head to my blog so you can see what I did with this watercolor background. All right, everybody, I'll see you guys back here tomorrow and have a great day. Bye-bye.